This picture shows the moment of Tutankhamun's tomb opening. It's the only tomb found in ancient Egypt that remained intact for 3,000 years. It appeared to be full of gold and artifacts. However, at least 13 people who were present at the tomb's opening died soon after, and a rumor about the curse of the pharaohs spread all over the world. In addition, the researchers of Tutankhamun's tomb studied the mummy, examined the attributes surrounding it, and noticed that everything was way different from what it was supposed to be. Ancient Egyptians believed that a pharaoh came close to gods after his death and spoke to them on behalf of his people. That's why the mummification process was treated with special care and tombs were decorated with great reverence. But why did they make an exception for Tutankhamun? Why did Osiris have his fingers cut off? And why does Tutankhamun's mummy baffle historians to this day? Why does the tomb itself confuse the researchers? Archaeologist Howard Carter and his companion Lord George Carnivan were astonished when they entered the tomb of the glorified king in 1922. Instead of a pompous and spacious hall, they found themselves in a small, cramped room that looked like a warehouse. The location of the tomb also raised questions, as Tutankhamun was buried far from his royal ancestors. This, according to ancient Egyptians, prevented the pharaoh from being reunited with his family to rule in the spiritual world. Let's say the ancestors' tombs just ran out of space, but why wasn't there even a coffin for the pharaoh? All the indications are that Tutankhamun got second-hand attributes. He lay within a nest of three golden coffins, which fitted one inside another. They all look like the god of the dead, Osiris, lying on his back and holding the crook and flail in his crossed arms. But the middle coffin had a slightly different style, and its face didn't look like the faces on the other two coffins. Nor did it look like the face on Tutankhamun's death mask. Egyptologists assumed that among the three coffins, this middle coffin, along with some of Tutankhamun's other grave goods, was initially made for the mysterious Neferniferuaten. It turned out that this woman was an enigmatic ruler whose name is recorded in inscriptions on the walls. Apparently, she lived at the time of Akhenaten, Tutankhamun's father, but died earlier and could never assert authority on her own, thereby her trail got lost in history. In addition, the undertakers cut off the part of the coffin that protruded from the sarcophagus, preventing the lid from closing. Later, archaeologists found fragments of Osiris' sawn-off toes at the bottom of the sarcophagus. Nothing could erase the fact that Tutankhamun was buried hastily. After all, archaeologists found traces of readjustment everywhere, indicating that the tomb itself was intended for another dignitary. Likely, the pharaoh died suddenly and no one was prepared for that. But what was the cause of the pharaoh's death? There are so many of them that it's hard to settle on one. Tutankhamun was a child of two siblings. As a result, he inherited genetic defects and congenital clubfoot. He was limping all his life and moved with a walking cane. 350 gold-plated, finely-painted walking canes were found in his tomb. He had a weakened immune system and brittle bones. Signs of malaria were found in his mummy. Despite his ailments, the young king enjoyed the fun and took rides in a chariot. Maybe this is why the leg of his mummy is broken. But it's still unclear why there's no heart, since Egyptians never removed this organ, believing it to be the center of a person's mind. King Tut's mummy is generally of low quality because it has a huge incision that no mummy has, stretching from the hip to the belly button. If we put all these facts together and attempt to assume how exactly did the young pharaoh die, we can get something like this. The crippled boy pharaoh with a terribly weak immune system took a chariot ride and fell off. 
But the chariot didn't continue moving straight. Instead, it turned around and went right across the king's chest. As a result, not only his bones were broken, but his heart was squashed as well. They tried to deliver his body to morticians as quickly as possible, but it started to decompose faster under the beating Egyptian sun. Sure thing, Tutankhamun's tomb wasn't ready, so he was placed in a cramped closet. His poor body was barely carried and haphazardly mummified. All rituals had to be given up, and the heart spot was filled with a handful of scarab beetle amulets. 3,000 years later, archaeologists found him and, as a cherry on top, dislodged a skull fragment when removing the poor mummy out of the coffin. But the list of weird accidents doesn't end even there. On top of everything, Tutankhamun's mummy was on fire. Egyptologist Chris Naunton and a team of forensic scientists performed a virtual autopsy on the young pharaoh in the Channel 4 television documentary, Tutankhamun, The Mystery of the Burnt Mummy. Further examination of the mummy's flesh fragment showed that it was set on fire or burnt, but it's unlikely anyone burned the king's body on purpose. Firstly, ancient Egyptians wouldn't presume to abuse the body of someone who, even after death, holds their destiny in their hands. And secondly, the mummy was burnt while still sealed inside his coffin. It's pretty hard to deny the existence of a curse under these circumstances, isn't it? But it turns out there was a lot of oil and resin on Tutankhamun's body, so much so that during the tomb's opening, the mummy had to be literally scraped off the coffin's walls. In the documentary, fire investigators demonstrated how a chemical reaction of the embalming oils used on Tutankhamun's mummy led to his spontaneous combustion. Such negligence during the embalming process is a rare exception. But what could the investigators who opened the coffin have died of? After a series of unexplained deaths of scientists and archaeologists and members of their families, many adherents of the idea of the curse of the pharaohs appeared in the world. Archaeologist Arthur Mace, radiologist Sir Archibald Douglas Reed, and Carnivan's brother Audrey Herbert died within a couple of years after the tomb's opening. They were followed by a member of the Egyptian royal family, Prince Ali Kamel Fami Bey, who was shot dead by his wife. Lord Carnivan, who, together with Carter, was the first to see the tomb, also died. But the curse adherents didn't consider the average age of the scientists, which was 74 and a half years. 57-year-old George Carnivan died of pneumonia and was generally predisposed to pulmonary disease his whole life. And Howard Carter, who was supposed to be the first to fall victim to the curse, died of natural causes at the age of 64, 16 years after the tomb's opening. Finally, Egyptologists point out that there was no such concept as a curse in Egyptian religious practice. A large number of people involved in other tomb openings never experienced any mystical influence. However, whatever version you support, you're right. It seems that in Tutankhamun's story, there was room for both curse and accident. Apart from the fact that scientists are still unable to unveil the mystery of his death, newly available data is even more confusing. That makes Tutankhamun almost funny. He had more adventures than Mr. Bean, but there's still no comedy movie featuring him as the main character. Maybe that's because of the lack of an appropriate name. What do you think a comedy about Tutankhamun could be called?